Hey, I'm Brian Goulet of GouletPens.com, and we're all human, we all make mistakes, and there's no exception to that in the fountain pen world. So we have compiled a list of the seven biggest mistakes that you can make with your fountain pen. Let's start at number seven. This one is something that a lot of people do when they're kind of new, and it's really only bad with particular types of pens, but it's putting your pen in your pocket with your keys or other metal objects, be it a pocket knife or whatever you've got keys are metal and they can scratch up your pens, especially if they're plastic, but really if they're coated metal, something like the Lamy All-Star or the Black Matte Pilot Vanishing Point, these have coatings on them and your keys can scratch them up. So if you want to take good care of them, just put them in a different pocket, maybe carry it some other way, put it in a little sleeve of some kind, just something to protect the pen a little better. Number six is using calligraphy ink in your fountain pens. You'll especially want to stay away from India ink, lawyer's ink, pigmented ink. There are some of these that are formulated for fountain pens, but most of them are for dip pens only. Now this is something a lot of new people can easily make the mistake on because if you're shopping, at especially a craft or art supply store, you can buy, oh, it's a bottle of ink. Well, make sure it's the right type of ink. Fountain pen ink is water-based, and if you go with a shellac-based calligraphy ink that's made for dip pens, it can clog up your pen, and the way to clean out shellac is with alcohol, and alcohol can destroy your pen. So really just keep this stuff away, make sure you're using the right type of ink in the right type of pen. Number five is writing with too much pressure. Part of the best thing about fountain pens is the fact that you don't have to press down hard on them to get them to write. The ink is very fluid and will flow out naturally. A properly tuned fountain pen should actually write just under its own weight. So you don't have to bear down really hard. And this is something people coming over from rollerballs and ballpoints really have to kind of get used to. You can spring the tines, you can damage your nib, you can cause it to write scratchy if you're writing with too much pressure. So make sure you just back it off a little bit and and the advantage is it's going to keep your hand from cramping up too. So all around, just ease off a little bit. Number four is something that a lot of even more experienced fountain pen people can be guilty of. It's not cleaning your pen, whether it's often enough or just properly. It does not really complicate it, just some lukewarm water. Distilled water is preferable, but not necessarily required. Maybe a little bit of dish soap if it's particularly hard, or some pen flush maybe if it's really bad. But just cleaning your pen regularly can help it to flow smoothly. If you're using the same color in it, clean it maybe once a month, just kind of to keep things flowing smoothly. And definitely you want to clean it every time you're changing ink colors. A bulb syringe is a fantastic tool, especially if you have a cartridge converter pen. And you can learn more about cleaning in the Fountain Pen 101 video I made called Pen Cleaning and Maintenance. Number three is pretty much a death sentence for your pen. Cleaning it with rubbing alcohol or acetone. Ah, oh, it just makes me cringe even saying the word acetone, but acetone melts plastic and Rubbing alcohol is not quite as aggressive as that, but even still it has additional chemicals in there that are not good for your pens. I've seen a number of them destroyed or melted entirely due to trying to clean with these materials. Just keep to the basic stuff, soap and water, to clean your pens and you should be okay. Certain inks like Noodler's Base States will clean up with a little bit of diluted bleach, but anything outside of this, you're really asking for trouble. And a side note, you never want to mix ammonia and bleach together. It will make a toxic gas. Number two is going to hit really close to home for some of you. It's dropping your pen directly on the nib. Now, I know this is an accident. It's not like an intentional thing. But as Murphy's Law would have it, if you have your fountain pen out with its nib exposed and you drop it, it's inevitably going to fall exactly with the point down faster and further and onto some kind of hard surface than if you would have the cap on it. It's just gonna work out that way. And if that does happen, a lot of times it can be a death sentence for the pen because if that nib gets bent and damaged, the cost of getting it repaired is oftentimes more than the pen is worth, unless you have a particularly valuable pen. And there are professionals who can do that, but oftentimes if you have a pen that's say under $100, it's not gonna be worth repairing it. You might get lucky and do it to uh, Edison, Twisby, Lamy, Monteverde, something like that that has a replaceable nib. And if that's the case, you can just buy a new nib and put it on the pen and that might work. But in general, just try to watch out when you have your cap off. And the number one biggest mistake you can make with your fountain pen is to not use it. Of course, 
These pens are amazing and they're meant to be written with and to not write with them would just be a waste. So please make sure that you enjoy using your fountain pens. Sometimes I get questions like, I have these pens and I don't really know what to do with them. Well, I got some ideas here for you. There's several people out there who do some really cool stuff. Um, Boho Berry, check her out for doing some bullet journaling. Uh, Liz Steele is a great resource for urban sketching, has lots of good tutorials there. Leigh Reyes is an inspiration with some flex nib and some calligraphy stuff. And even if you're not like trying to start a new hobby with it, there's some just, you know, little projects that you can do just to incorporate pens more into your daily life. Like writing thank you notes to people. Uh, you can start up pen pals, you know, just writing letters to your kids or starting a daily journal. You can do to-do lists, grocery lists, things like that. Writing daily affirmations, maybe transcribing something from poetry or some religious text that you find inspiring. There's lots of different ways that you can use your pens to make your daily life even better. So those are my top seven biggest fountain pen mistakes. Hopefully you haven't made too many of them, but if you have, I would love to hear about it because it would probably be pretty entertaining. So if you could leave some comments on YouTube or on the blog, I would love to hear about your pen mistakes that you have made. If you haven't subscribed yet to our YouTube channel, I would very much encourage you to do so. And if you want to learn more about fountain pens in general, be sure to check out the other videos we have, and you can check out gouletpens.com where you can buy lots of fountain pen products. Thanks so much for watching and right on.